Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about itchy bumps under the arms. Now, there are a lot of different reasons why you might have itchy bumps under your arms, such as from irritation related to shaving, maybe you've developed ingrown hairs, and there's also a condition called hydratinitis suppurativa, where you develop these uncomfortable bumps under your arms that come together into draining sinuses. Now, I have a video all about hydratinitis suppurativa, so if you're dealing with that, I want you to watch that video. I'm going to link it down below in the description box. I also have videos all about little infections that can happen in the hair follicles under the arms called folliculitis that lead to itchy bumps. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about a particular itchy bump under the arm condition. And the reason I want to talk about it today is that it tends to often appear for the first time during hot, humid conditions, such as what we are experiencing now. Um, as a side note, there's a thunderstorm going on and I don't have power, so we've got kind of a spooky vibe going on. So the itchy bumps I wanna talk about in today's video represent blockage of a type of sweat gland called an apocrine gland. Now, apocrine glands are located under your arms, in the anogenital area, and also on the areola of the breasts of women. And these are different from sweat glands that put out sweat to cool the body. Sweat glands that put out sweat, like when we're working out or it's really hot, they are located pretty much everywhere. But these apocrine glands are located in these specific areas. They do put out secretions that contribute to body odor, but honestly, we really don't know what their purpose is. And they're just kind of there and you can have skin problems associated with them. And this condition is one such problem. It's called Fox Fordyce disease or also called apocrine miliaria. It's a blockage of these little apocrine sweat glands under the arms. And it appears as these flesh colored bumps affecting pretty much every hair follicle under the arms. It affects both underarms. Bumps can also be sort of reddish and it's really itchy because the blockage um, leads to kind of buildup of those apocrine secretions, which can leak out into the surrounding skin, inciting a lot of inflammation that leads to itch. The itch can be quite debilitating. It can disrupt your sleep because it's itchy. You scratch and with time that can lead to discoloration skin thickening. The skin can take on a dark appearance, which is known as lichenified. It can develop some overlying scale. But the primary skin lesion of Fox Fordyce disease is this skin-colored, flesh-colored bump overlying the hair follicle. And again, it tends to affect both underarms. Now, why we develop this is really a mystery. There are a lot of working theories. Here's the thing. It primarily affects women especially women who um, are menstruating, women who have gone through menarche, you know, post-pubertal, but have not yet gone through menopause. And because of this, one of the working theories is that, well, perhaps this is a condition related to hormones. Supporting this idea, though, is the fact that many women who develop this can improve somewhat when they're placed on hormonal contraceptive pills, which contain estrogens and progesterones. But again, it's like, is this really a major cause? Do these treatments really help? It doesn't help everyone. So it's a big area of question mark. In contrast to other types of bumps that develop as a result of irritation under the arms, deodorants and antiperspirants are not actually a culprit here um, because deodorants and antiperspirants, they, while they can be irritating for sure under the arms, when women stop using these who develop Fox Fordyce, the condition does not go away. It doesn't improve. It doesn't seem to make a difference in other words. Now, why it is that uh, this comes about when it is hot and humid is another area where we don't really fully understand. It could be that the eccrine sweat surrounding the area irritates the skin, makes it more prone to uh, blockage. That's a possibility. It could be that the heat, the friction, all lead to occlusion of those apocrine, apocrine sweat glands. Because we don't really have a good understanding of why it even happens in the first place, treating it is really, really tricky. 
So how do we treat Fox Fordyce eyes disease? How do we help it to get better, to go away? There are two main approaches to treating it. First is to treat the actual issue of the blockage of the apocrine glands. And the other treatment approach, of course, is to treat the symptoms, treat the consequences, the inflammation that is resulting from the leakage of those secretions out into the surrounding skin. So in terms of treating the blockage, one ingredient family that we rely on a lot for normalizing the lining of pores, the top layer of the skin is, well, topical retinoids like tretinoin, tazeratine, adapalene, triferritine. Unfortunately, as I pointed out in many of my videos, the usage of these for this condition is limited by irritation. Now, one thing you have to understand is that the underarm skin is quite unique. It is a lot more vulnerable to becoming irritated by things that you put on. Topical retinoids at baseline for most people lead to some irritation of the skin in the beginning, but that is particularly the case under the arms. Um, and for this reason, some women do in fact get benefit from using a topical retinoid here, but in the vast majority of cases, Usage is limited by the development of excessive irritation, which is unfortunate. We also can treat the inflammation, the itch with topical steroids. However, topical steroids, you know, they calm down the inflammation that can provide some symptomatic relief of the itch. But again, a big issue with using topical steroids under the arm is because of the nature of the skin. You have sweat, occlusion, skin on skin contact, friction, and the skin there is pretty delicate. This enhances the risk of side effects from topical steroids, such as skin thinning and the development of stretch marks. So they're not ideal to be used under the arms long term. So selecting the appropriate steroid is, a, is important and then monitoring the patient to make sure they're not developing these side effects is also obviously super important. Now, another type of medication that can be applied under the arms that addresses the inflammation and can actually help um, address the itch is, well, there are two actual medications in a class known as calcineurin inhibitors. These include pimcrolimus and tacrolimus. These go by the brand names Elodil, Protopic, you may have already heard about them. And they can safely be used under the arms. Unfortunately, their efficacy is somewhat variable. And again, irritation is still possible simply because of the nature of our underarm skin. Friction, sweat, all of these things. So topicals are tricky and their efficacy is quite variable. There's also energy and light-based modalities, um, such as pulse dye laser, which can actually help calm down the inflammation. You also have CO2 laser, um, which can actually be effective um, for some cases. Laser hair removal has also been met with varying levels of success here because honestly, the hair growth is not really a driving factor for the occlusion of the apocrine glands. So it's, it's kind of, you know, um, again, very variable. So it's really a frustrating condition to deal with. So I recommend for patients who struggle with this, you know, to use a topical moisturizing lotion with either menthol or promoxine. These can help alleviate itch, be very soothing. I recommend putting them in the refrigerator, letting them chill a bit, and applying them to the skin cold. Um, because this can actually help alleviate the itch, keep the skin moisturized. I also recommend taking measures, especially as we head into these summer months where it's hot and humid, taking measures to stay cool, to stay dry, to limit um, accumulation of eccrine sweat on the skin surface, which is irritating to your skin, and to avoid wearing clothing that is restrictive, that causes a lot of friction on the skin under the arms. Not only will that help to minimize flares of the itch and the symptoms by reducing friction, but it also can really help you out in terms of not aggravating the condition and the occlusion of those apocrine glands. If you can carry a little battery operated fan with you to keep good circulation under the arms, that may also help. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that avoiding deodorants and antiperspirants doesn't really seem to make a difference. 
But one thing you can do that I happen to find to be helpful for some is to utilize a hypochlorous acid spray. Now, to be clear, hypochlorous acid spray is not going to get rid of this condition. It's not a you know evidence-based treatment for it, but it's going to help you out perhaps symptomatically because we do know that it can help alleviate the symptoms of itch. But one of the other benefits of using hypochlorous acid spray under the arms is that, well, it can help with body odor because it has a deodorizing effect to it, but it also also helps to cool the skin a bit through um, evapor evaporative effects, similar to your eccrine sweat. So that's another thing that you might want to carry around with you if you deal with this to alleviate the itch as well as to help keep the skin uh, cool. And you can just spray it there and again, take that fan, let it air dry. It really can help cut down on irritation, inflammation, and itch. Um, and they're pretty inexpensive. You don't have to buy that, you know, pricey Tower 28 one. They have some that you can buy on Amazon, like um, Skin Smart Antimicrobial. I'll link it down below in the description box. Benzoyl peroxide wash may be helpful to a certain extent. Now, benzoyl peroxide is an ingredient used to treat acne, and it primarily works by um, reducing inflammation, which ultimately can help you out with itch. It also works to cut down on the acne-causing bacteria, cutie bacteria acnes and it also can help to a certain extent with exfoliating and cutting down on pore clogging so those features together can to a certain extent help also address the issue with clogging of the apocrine sweat gland as well as to cut down on inflammation that leads to itch now Benzoyl peroxide can be drying under the arms, but I do suggest trying a creamy benzoyl peroxide wash, um, lathering it there while you're in the shower. Let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and then make sure you rinse it off fully. When you get out of the shower, apply that cooling moisturizer to the underarms to provide symptomatic relief. The other reason the moisturizer piece of things can be particularly useful is that it lubricates the skin surface and cuts down on friction. So those are some practical skincare tips to help, you know, alleviate symptoms and, you know, perhaps help the cause out a lot. But I want to emphasize that why women get these and the best way to go about getting rid of them is a big question mark area. And it's not because we're not actively studying it. It's not because we're not actively researching it. It's because by and large, the condition isn't that common so we don't see a high volume of it all the time you know it's easier to study conditions like psoriasis and atopic dermatitis that are a lot more common we get a lot more patients with these conditions than we do something like fox four dyes so that's why there's such a question mark it's hard to study things that are not as common as what we see all of the time and not every patient is the same. Some patients respond to certain treatments better. There's also a problem with long-term follow-up. That is an issue in all areas of medicine. And by long-term follow-up, I mean patients because of perhaps insurance reasons and things of that sort, they're unlikely to be coming to you for years and years and years for something like this. Inevitably, they end up getting what's called loss to follow up. So that's a problem right there. Like we don't really know, for example, in the case of uh, a, a treatment that seemed to help, how long did that treatment maintain clearance? To how long did that treatment maintain improvement? We really only have as much information as we do in terms of the duration of follow-up. Anyways, guys, it's a really frustrating condition to cope with. I'm not going to come on here and try and act like we have the best treatment and this is how to get rid of it. I think it's important to have a realistic understanding of what the condition is, what you can expect. Yes, in some cases it will spontaneously resolve, but for many women, they end up dealing with this for years and years and years. Now today, this video was focused on these bumps under the arms, but they also can impact the skin around the um, nipple, the areola as well, because you do have these glands there. Hope this video was informative to you guys and educational and check the description box. I will link some of these videos that I recommended you watch. 
from my channel, as well as some of the skincare that I recommend in this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.